The universe we live in, so vast it's almost beyond imagination. Over 13.8 billion light years across, with trillions of galaxies, each containing hundreds of billions of stars and countless planets orbiting them. It's hard to believe that our tiny Earth is the only place where life exists. And if an alien civilization truly exists out there, we would no longer be the center of the universe or the pinnacle of intelligence, but just a tiny speck among countless others. But if aliens do exist, what would their civilization look like? Would they resemble us? Or have they evolved so far that they are beyond human comprehension? A civilization may have emerged millions of years before us and vanished leaving behind nothing but faint fading signals in space. Or aliens might only appear millions of years after we are gone. It's not just spatial distance, hundreds of thousands of light years, but also temporal distance. That makes contact between civilizations nearly impossible. The concept of civilization cannot be based solely on shape, language, or technology. It needs a shared frame of reference beyond all biological or environmental differences. And the one factor every civilization in the universe must face is energy. Currently, our sample size for civilizations is just one. So, any assumption we make may be biased. Still, it's better than having nothing at all. Looking back at ourselves, we started with bare hands and muscle, then came fire, the first invention that changed humanity's fate. Since then, history has been a continuous chain of progress in energy harnessing, steam engines, fossil fuels, electricity, nuclear power. Each advancement was more than just an invention. It was a leap in thinking in how we control the world around us. And if we want to imagine a higher, more advanced civilization, we should look at the energy they could harness. Currently, the energy we harness from Earth accounts for only about 0.72 on the scale of a Type 1 civilization. This means we only use energy sources from our planet, such as fossil fuels, renewable energy like solar and wind, and nuclear power. A Type 1 civilization is not just a technological concept. It's the ability to control and harness all available energy from its home planet. This includes using solar and wind energy on a global scale, tapping into oceanic, geothermal, and other forms of energy we're only beginning to understand. A, upon reaching Type 1, we would no longer fear natural disasters. We could control and intervene in environmental factors like climate, earthquakes, tsunamis, droughts, or even storms. We would build technologies to control Earth's temperature, reduce pollution, and maintain a stable environment for life. A future where humanity is no longer a tiny race in a vast universe. Achieving Type 1 status would signify humanity's transition into a civilization capable of sustaining life and harnessing the forces of nature. A Type II civilization is the conqueror of an entire star system. An alien civilization could harness all the energy emitted by its star, not just the light and heat reaching the surface of a planet, but every photon, every infrared wave, every gamma ray escaping from the core of a sun. Imagine a structure that completely surrounds a star, a Dyson sphere made up of millions or even billions of satellites or energy collecting mirrors orbiting around it. If a Dyson sphere is too idealistic, a more practical version would be a Dyson swarm, a network of spacecraft and devices orbiting a star, collecting energy like bees gathering nectar from a forest of plasma flowers. 
They could modify the climate of other planets, warm Mars, create atmospheres on icy moons, or even transform a dead world into a new home. This is the level of terraforming, altering a planet to make it capable of sustaining life. At this level, they are no longer constrained by energy limits. Ideas that once sounded like science fiction, moving a planet out of orbit, building floating cities, or turning stars into weapons, are now possible. A Type III civilization is the master of hundreds of billions of suns. A civilization at this level is no longer confined to a single star system. They harness the energy of an entire galaxy, much like how humans operate a nuclear power plant. They could travel between star systems as we fly from Asia to Europe. Time is no longer a barrier. Space is no longer a limitation. They may bent space-time, used wormholes, or develop technologies beyond human comprehension or vocabulary. Their presence might be marked by mysterious signals we have yet to decode. Invisible energy sources, stars that disappear abnormally, or radio signals that defy known physical phenomena. Their technology would appear magical to us. They might create life, duplicate consciousness, or even reconstruct reality. Every planet they visit could be restructured to suit their needs. Air, gravity, and temperature programmable. We might imagine them as gods roaming the dark of the galaxy, not to conquer or destroy. To such intellect, the existence of humanity might be just a speck of dust they once noticed and forgot. All the theories we debate today could be their ancient knowledge from millions of years ago. A Type IV civilization is an inter-universal traveler, a master of the cosmos. They are no longer limited by the Milky Way or nearby galaxy clusters. To them, a galaxy is just a small island in the vast ocean of the universe they've long since traversed. Type IV civilizations don't just harvest energy from one galaxy, they command many at once. They travel along the cosmic threads connecting galaxy clusters, manipulating dark energy and dark matter, forces that make up 95% of the universe, yet we only know they exist. For them, creating a new star, melting an icy planet, or redirecting the evolution of a primitive civilization is merely a micro-adjustment. But beyond Type IV lies Type V, a civilization that creates universes. Like a programmer crafting a virtual world, Type V can define physical constants, rewrite the structure of time, and redefine the concept of existence. They are no longer human, if that term still has meaning. They are pure intelligence, perhaps without bodies or forms, only willpower existing in hyperspace, like waves in an eternal ocean. To them, our universe might just be an experiment, a lab to observe physical phenomena, life, and consciousness. We might be a creation of Type 5 without even knowing it. And then, in the farthest corner of human imagination is the Type Omega civilization, a concept, a legend, or the one who rewrites the rules. Type Omega doesn't just create a universe, they create all the possibilities that could exist. No more physics, no more space, no more limits, only absolute will. If reality is a simulation, they are the ultimate programmers. Type Omega does not observe, does not intervene, does not exist in any definition we have. They are the reason why existence exists. And if one day we look up at the night sky, who knows, what we are gazing at might not be stars, but the remnants of an intelligence that has transcended all boundaries, silently sketching the foundation of reality itself. Perhaps a truly advanced civilization is one that has learned to integrate with nature, exist sustainably, and find balance within its own limitations. Perhaps 
The greatest leap is not in harnessing the energy of a star, but in controlling greed, fear, and the destruction from within. If that is true, then we are still primitive beings in the vast universe. The ones just beginning the journey of awareness. Subscribe to the channel before humanity reaches type 1 and misses everything. Who knows, with one click you might see the first signal from the distant sky.